the Lord be with you. Let us worship God. approach a holy God, we realize that we have sinned and come short of his glory. Let us therefore humbly confess our sins to him as we kneel together and say, God, a righteous judge and merciful Father, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. We acknowledge that we are responsible for our sinfulness. Have mercy upon us, we pray. And forgive us by the love which you have shown toward us in Jesus Christ. Who for our sakes died and rose again. Give us true repentance by the power of the Holy Spirit. And enable us to forsake our evil ways. And serve you in newness of life. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant unto us pardon and remission of all our sins, time for amendment of life, and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Recognizing that God has forgiven us because Jesus, the Lamb of God, has died for us, let us Adore him, say, belongs to our God who sits upon the throne and to the Lamb. Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and mind be to our God forever and ever. Amen. You have dealt well with your servants, O Lord. Blessed are you, O Lord. The word is a lamb to our feet. The appointed psalm for this service is Psalm 23. It shall be read responsibly. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. Therefore, and I lack nothing. He 
he will refresh my soul and guide me in right pathways for his name's sake. You spread a table before me in the face of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cups will be full. The first lesson is taken from the book Genesis, chapter 18. We commence the reading from verse 10. Genesis, chapter 18, commences the reading from verse 10. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life, and lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son. And Sarah had it in the tenth door, which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and were striking in age. And he seeks to be with Sarah after the manner of women. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I am was old, Shall I have pleasure, my Lord being hold also? And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh? Say, Shall I of a surety bear a child, which I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time I pointed, I will return unto thee, according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. Then Sarah denied, saying, I loved not, for she was afraid. And he said, Nay, for thou didst love. This is the word of the Lord. second lesson is taken from the epistle to the Hebrews chapter 13. We shall begin to read from verse 15. By him therefore let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually, that is the fruit of our lips giving signs to his name. But to do good and to communicate, forget not. 
For with such sacrifices God is well pleased. Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves for the watch for your souls as they that must give account that they may do it with joy and not with for that is unprofitable for you pray for us for we trust we have a good conscience in all things willing to live honestly but i beseech you the rather to do this that i may be restored to you the sooner now the god of peace that brought again from the dead our lord jesus that great shepherd of of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant make you perfect in every good work to do his will working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight through jesus christ to whom be glory forever and ever amen this is the word of the lord my Lord Bishop for this rare opportunity granted unto me to stand before the people of God this morning to deliver this message. This is my prayer. Lord, we continue to bless this Episcopacy ministry in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us bow our hands as we pray. Almighty God, we give all the glory to you. Because you are making us to see this day. Lord, we pray that you grant us the grace to believe in you. We pray that you continue to grant us your grace to seek you every day in whatever we ask from you. So that we can be able to experience your great possibilities through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The theme of our meditation this morning is God of Possibilities. Now our text is taken from Genesis chapter 18, verses 13 and 14. It reads thus. And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore, this said a laugh, saying, Shall I of a surety bear a child which am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. 
in our Old Testament read this morning, that is Genesis chapter 18, verses 10 to 15, we are made to understand that Abraham was sitting at a time of the eighth day. He was still waiting for God to answer him on the issue of childbearing. He believed that God is able to perform miracles in his life for doubting the way God will do it. And this was making the wife to laugh in that scenario. When Ambra was sitting waiting to do what he lost doing, he saw three men coming towards him. These men were three heavens beings. Now assuming human bodies, that they might be visible to Abraham. Abraham forgetting his age and personality. He ran to meet them in the most humble manner and with all he bowed himself towards the ground to welcome them and persuade them to have a stopover in his place and refresh themselves after they may continue with their journey. Abraham entertained these strangers of knowing that he had welcomed the heavenly bodies into his hands. They took notice of the very free, affectionate manner to which he treated them. Then the next question was, we are in Sarah, your wife. He replied, she is in the tent. And the Lord said to him, I will surely return to you in the spring, and Sarah, your wife, shall have a son. This statement seemed to be strange. And funny to Sarah, she then laughed and said, How possible is this after I have grown old, and my Lord is old already? Although it was a joyous news to Sarah, and the entire family, but Sarah find it difficult to believe within himself, herself, because she was already above many of us and totally was old. Even she had considered herself married while ruminating on this. The Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? Is anything too hard? For the Lord, Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 17 and 27. Numbers 33, verse 23. Why are you doubting God? However, Prophet Elijah told Naaman, the commander of Syria's armies, to go and wash himself seven times in the river Jordan. Naaman thought that this is impossible to remove his ailment. Because Naaman was expecting something different from the man of God. He said within himself, I would rather wash myself in Abanas or Farpa's river than dipping myself in the dirty river Jordan. Later he was persuaded and agreed to do so. Immediately the Bible says, his amen left him and his flesh was restored. Dearly people of God, our God is moved in a mysterious way. He is a miracle worker. He is all doing, all knowing, a covenant and keeping God. He is our sustainer and the greatest sinner. We must believe that there is anything that is too difficult for God to do. And especially in our church, Genesis chapter 18, verse 14, the Bible says, at the appointed time, I will return unto thee according to the time of life and Sarah shall have a son. There is nothing that is too difficult for God to do. There is nothing that God cannot do. Even a woman who had been mentally disordered for 12 years heard of Jesus and said if I may touch his garments I shall be made whole. Mark 5 verse 25 people of God in this hard period, we must learn how to trust in our great shepherd who can do or make impossible 
to be possible. And he is a great provider, which means and is joining us to trust in God in every situation that we find ourselves. Even the psalmist said, we have read this morning, he said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in the green patches. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteous. For his name said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. God can never leave you alone or allow his children to be suffered. He can do more than what you think if you believe in God and rest upon him for better tomorrow. The Bible says, weeping may endure for night, but joy comes in the morning. We must be waiting for God and endure to receive our possibilities and tarry in the presence of God always. We must not underestimate the power of God, especially as we witness or witnessing the power of restoration in a time like this. We must not forget to do good with everybody, even to allow or to invoke the presence of the Lord to perform his wonders in our life. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 16 says, But do not forget to do good and to share, for with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. The Bible made us know that the centurion whose servant was in verge of death and terrible situation believed in the word of healing and he surrendered his life to God and was survived even by faith. People of God, where is your faith? Do you believe in his word? Do you believe that God can do anything? Do you believe that God can minister to you in every situation? He will make it possible because our God is God of possibilities. Luke chapter 1 verse 37 says, For with God, nothing will be impossible. Therefore, let us take our predicaments to him today. He is there to perfect every situation of our lives. Now may the God of peace who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you complete in every good work to do his will, working in you what is well pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ to whom be glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. His only Son, our Lord, He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us, the Lord's prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show your mercy upon us. O Lord, guide and defend our rulers. And deal with your ministers with righteousness. O Lord, save your people. Give peace in our time, O Lord. O God, make clean our heart within us. They call it for the weak and other prayers. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, thy great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, make us perfect in every good work to do your will and wear in us that which is well pleasing in your sight through Jesus Christ our Lord. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom stands our internal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, your humble servants, in all our sorts of our enemies, that we surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the mind of Jesus Christ our Lord. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day and this week, defend us in this same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by your governors to do always what is righteous in your sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. In continuation of our prayer, we shall pray for our country, Nigeria, the Church Universal, and all that prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, the ruler of the nations of this world, look with your favor, we pray, upon all who hold authority in this and every land. We pray especially for our president, Bola, our governor in Ogun State. And as many that are in position of authority, enable them to govern justly all those over whom they are set. Establish your kingdom of righteousness across the bounds of the nation and bring in your reigns of peace under Jesus Christ, our kings and our head, in whose all power names we pray through Jesus Christ our Lord. O God of unchanging power and internal light, look favorably on the whole church, especially the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion, and we pray for our primate, Henry, our ambition in the province of Lagos, Ulushino, and our bishop in this diocese, Babatunde, 
the wonderful and sacred ministry you have committed to them shall be kept. And by the operation of your providence, carry out the works of man's salvation and let the whole world feel and see the things which were cast down and been raised up. That things which are grown old are being made new. And that all things are returning to perfection through him from whom they took their origin, even through our Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gracious Father of all possibility, we beseech you to look mercifully to as many that are passing through difficulties and surprise them with your power of possibility. Let the sick among us be healed. Let the blind get their sight back. Father, visit the barren and make them fruitful among us. And let as many that are depressed be comforted in every aspect of their life. These are many more we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. People of God, please let's present our pastor personal request before our God. He is God of all possibility. Please commit the week to the hands of the Lord. This is a new week entirely compared to the previous week you have spent. Ask God to take absolute control of it in your ministry, in your marriage, in your education, concerning your health and touching your business. Are there any difficulties confronting your life? Can you please talk to the Lord? Let's begin to bring our personal request to our close. Lord, in your mercy, Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom. You know our need before we hurt, and our ignorance in action. Have compassion on our weakness, and give us those things which for our unworthiness we dare not, and for our blindness we cannot have. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. As one big family, shall we say the prayer of grace together? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Father, we thank you for the gift you have given to us in the course of the previous week. Out of your blessing, we have brought all this in covenant with you. Lord, I said all these are often and tight in the name of Jesus. Provide for as many that you know how. We pray as many that have given you, prosper them as they embark on their business in this new week. And we pray when next we shall have an opportunity to give unto you. You will count all of us worthy to be a partaker of your blessing. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Let us commit our way unto the hands of the Lord as we are going. From the theme of our meditation this morning, 
I want us to pray and talk to the Lord. Lord, make my impossibility to become possibility. As I go this week, help me in every aspect of my life. In the name of Jesus. In every aspect I've been struggling, put an end to my struggle and glorify your name. Let's begin to bring our prayer to our close. Lord, in your mercy, the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your heart and mind the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Please stand as we take our diocese and memory verse together. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to those who have been saved, it is the power of God. No cross, no cross, no cross. The blessing of the Lord be upon you. Have a wonderful new week.